Okay, cool. Okay, hello everyone. Uh, welcome to Human vs. Machine, um, a love story. My name is Simon Chisnell, um, and I've come across from Auckland, where I work for a small company by the name of Webscope. Um, been around for a while. I've been uh, developing Drupal for six or seven years. Um, so a quick introduction about this presentation. Um, so at Webscope, we've spent years refining and adding to our developer workflow, and now we think we've struck Drupal Gold. This is the intro anyway. This is not written by me, this is written by my boss, who's not here. <laughs> But we love automated tests as they allow us to spend more time doing what we do best, writing code, or letting machines do what they do best, automation. But this is more my kind of concept, is automation isn't easy, and in this presentation we'll look at some different approaches we've taken personally, or as a company, and share our experiences with each of these. Um, so an overview of what we'll be looking at. Uh, three different testing methods, methodologies, methodologies. Um, CI, continuous integration, we've probably everyone knows, um, continuous testing, which is something I made up, and visual regression testing. And quick discussion around the technologies we use in the tech stack area. Um, Pantheon for hosting, um, sorry for platform SH and Acquia, but we use Pantheon. Um, put bucket for um, a repo which we need for code ship, and then BHAT, uh, I don't know if you were in the Sam Becker's one, but he didn't seem to like it, but we use it. Uh, and then Vagrant um, for our VM local development. But maybe Beatbox now, because that sounded pretty cool. Um, so for each of these testing methods, uh, we'll have a look at what it is, um, how we implement them, uh, and then pros and cons for each. Okay, continuous integration, what is it? Um, people are probably familiar with it, the concepts. Basically, a development practice where developers uh, constantly check in and integrate code into a shared repository, um, and then each check-in is verified by an automated test before being deployed. So how do we implement CI, in particular around Pantheon, um, which is not so CI friendly? Um, so a little diagram here, a developer does some work, um, commits to some, to some work in the Bitbucket repo. Um, so I'm not talking about branches here, I'm just kind of gen generally talking about the flow. Um, does some work, commits Bitbucket, uh, then fires code chip, or I should say code chip watches Bitbucket, um, and then a test is run, or a build, project build is run in code chip. Now code chip basically builds the complete website, uh, it provides I think a base kind of VM or environment um, that you can then do what you want with. Uh, and in this case, we run a script there in the corner, if you can see it, um, which basically says use our code base, our code base from a Bitbucket push. Uh, use Terminus, which is a Pantheon thing to get a database. In this case, we use a um, development database. Uh, and then using a custom settings, pull in that database, start the server, and then run some BHAT tests. Uh, and then if the tests do not pass, we get notified and the developer can fix them. If they do, um, then that should be automatically de deployed. And in this case, the deployment basically involves cloning down the Pantheon repo, uh, copying over our Bitbucket code, and then committing those changes. So then that pushes your, your commit all the way through from Bitbucket into Pantheon. Okay, so pros and cons. Uh, pros, it's useful to stop multiple developers committing code that interferes with other developer code. So that's, that's a CI concept in general. Um, again, gives the developer commitment, confidence to commit and release code and forces developers to fix code so they won't, or it won't get um, deployed. Or my bugbear with it is they might just bypass the tests because they're just in a hurry. Um, so the cons can be complex to set up, uh, especially for small uh, web shops or personal, personal people with a lot of overhead involved in that. Um, there you go, large amount of set up overhead. Uh, and then minor issues can hold up development and deployment, I should say, really in there. Um, if it's a small thing and you just want to try to get it into your development environment to show people, then you've got to fix that test. Or in the end, you might just bypass the test. Um, there's some resources if you wanted to try that cycle out yourself. We've got a 
Re repo, GitHub um, repo at the top. Um, and then that basically is based on some Pantheon, uh, that particular Pantheon repository, uh, which I found very useful, and they've got some other useful ones as well. Link through to Codeship and BHAT. Uh, well, it's actually not BHAT, that's the Drupal extension which BHAT runs on. Okay, so another testing method which I started implementing more um, is the one that I've made up, continuous testing. Um, it's basically CI without the automated deployment. So it's less likely to interfere with day-to-day -day development. So it's, the concept is more, uh, it's, it'll fire your, you've, or will run on every commit, it'll run, a, it'll run your tests, but you don't have to worry about it. You don't have to worry about if it's going to do a deployment. You don't have to worry about running a test locally. It's just constantly running in the, in the background. Um, so yeah, so basically follows a similar process to CI, except there's no deployment at the end of the cycle, and we only use, another advantage, only use the Bitbucket repo to hold files required for the tests. Actual test build is fired by CodeShip API. So I'll demo, I won't demo that, I will demo it shortly, but... So um, a little diagram of that. So this time we're working directly on, a, um, on the Pantheon branch, whatever it may be, develop, or if you've got a, a multi-dev branch. And you make a commit, and we use Pantheon's Quicksilver hook, which basically allows you to run anything you want on certain actions in the Pantheon repo. So in this case, we run a, um, a command which calls in some PH, calls a PHP script to run, which then triggers a code chip build. So previously, prior to this, we've set up code chip, um, a code chip project and everything ready to go, and then so basically the Pantheon commit fires off um, a command to run that, that code chip build. And then test pass, nothing happens. Uh, deployment will still be handled by the developer, the usual kind of concept with Pantheon. Uh, however, if tests fail, then they get notified um, by whatever means you want, Slack or email or anything you desire. Okay. Uh, so pros and cons for continuous testing. Pros only requires code to live on one repository, so this is a big one for us. Me personally, especially, I didn't like code living in Bitbucket and Pantheon. Um, uninterrupted deployment, so if you're in a hurry, you just want to get things into branch or into, onto Pantheon uh, to show a client or something, it goes straight through, and then because of this test, you never need to be bypassed. Uh, some cons, failed tests won't stop deployment, uh, and then we basically, as a side thing, bad code can make it through more easily, so it's not, it's not a foolproof gate. Um, it's more of a notification that, you're running, that your tests are running okay, that your code base is going okay. Um, what else have we got there? Oh, that's right. It's not really, <laughs> it's not really using testing platforms as they are intended. Uh, it's, kind of, it's kind of a hack that we've come up with to, to um, be useful for Pantheon. Okay. So resources for that, that's uh, top one is another repo we created. Uh, it's got everything you need to basically set up and try to run this kind of cycle, this method, um, and then the same code chip in Drupal there. Okay, so I'll do a demo, which is going to be exciting. Okay. That's quite small. So this is a BHAT test. Um, well, first of all, I should say they've just installed default Drupal site um, straight out of the box, standard profile. Um, created one article there just to show that it's got content. We're not actually going to use that content. So going back to our feature, um, we can see our scenario view homepage. This is pretty irrelevant, but reading it through. Um, using BHAT saying, given I am an anonymous user, uh, and then and article content. So this is using the Drupal extension um, to create content quickly and easily. Um, so to create those three nodes of article content um, with title, status, and body, and then go to the home page and then telling us what we should see. Um, so we should see those three articles. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 
can probably clear that. That's really small too. Okay, so running running the test, creating the content, and it's passing, which makes sense because we've just created it. Uh, you'll notice that oops, uh, it's created that content, but it hasn't. It's not on the in the database. Uh, that's because Drupal extension with Bhat will delete any nodes that are created in a test, which is quite handy. Okay, so we'll go in. We will break the test. Down the highly scientific way of commenting out a title and rerun the test. And we should see it fails. Okay, so say I'm a developer, unbeknownst to me, me commenting out a title broke, broke something. Um, I commit it anyway. Add commit. Titles. Okay, so if we're going back to our slide previously, that commit is going to fire off our Quicksilver um, hook, and we can jump into that quickly. Quicksilver hook that sits within um, our actual Pantheon code base calls a code chip um, integration PHP file, and in particular here, does a curl request to an API endpoint on code chip. So basically it says code chip, run that, run that project build. Uh, and then if you go into code chip, okay, so this is the actual build. We can see that it's running, it's been triggered. Um, and so it started. And that takes a little bit. So as you can see, this is, I mean, I think this one takes three minutes, and that's one test. So it's not the most efficient way of testing, but I guess that's functional testing. Um, but the concept being that every commit, this will run kind of in the background. You don't have to really be aware of it um, until something comes up you weren't expecting. Um, this is particularly good for front-end developers if they don't like to run tests locally. Um, they won't even be aware that it's being run on every commit. OK, so we look into the setup of the code chip build uh, or project. You can basically tell code chip to run whatever commands you want um, when the project starts. Uh, in this case, we run a script and with a couple of arguments. Uh, now if we go into that script, is it big enough? That's kind of big enough. OK. Uh, now, this is where it gets kind of complicated, but it's quite a bit of work in setting up. Um, the environment we need, that we need, starting off with um, removing some guff, hex debug that comes with the Composer, installing Pickle, I mean installing Imagic, um, then basically using Composer to, I think we're adding in Drush Terminus, um, B hat in there, connecting to Terminus, whoops, uh, where are we? OK, and then you can see in here, it's a little bit different there. So we're running, we're running git clone to pull in our, um, our Pantheon repo, and then using that code base, using Terminus, which is another Pantheon tool, to basically grab the database um, down from development. And we're going to test against and install the site, do a bit of cache refreshing. Uh, install Selenium and start PHP. So if we go back to a test now. It's always a little bit variable. Okay, you can still see it's running, but you can always jump into any test. So we chose CodeShip because I think it had free tests, so it was easy to start with. Um, oh, there we go. So you can see it's come through, it's run our test and it's failed. Now this is where a notification will come through. Um, it's important if, if you use this system to have good notifications, an email or um, I think there's a Chrome plugin and something like Slack um, will pop up saying that that particular commit has caused a fail. Um, so the developer can go and fix it uh, at their own leisure. It's a good concept. 
Okay, uh, last one we're going to look at. Oh, no. oh yeah. Last one we're going to look at is visual regressing testing. Um, so I've only just started playing with this, uh, slightly not through to the introduction. Um, the concept is using screenshot comparisons to automatically detect changes and then report them back to you. Um, so the usual process is a set of baseline screenshots of your application or website that's generated by creating node content or nodes of set content and then any point after that you can um, compare against that baseline uh, to see if any changes have come through. Only really useful for uh, after base development or after the website's been developed, um, but can be very powerful. Um, so usual process is two prong. Developer develops either a content type or the entire project's complete. Um, comes up with some baseline images or baseline tests. Um, so I'll go. I'll give a quick demo of that, um, and then runs this bhat to, uh, command or a set of set of tests essentially to create those baselines. Um, and then maybe a month later he comes back, decides they want to work on something else in the project, um, makes code changes, etc., and then runs a different suite of tests to test against that baseline. Um, okay, maybe I'll just go straight into a demo of that. All right, so this is a test set up to just have to do this locally because we've only just got it going really. Um, this is a test to create that baseline. Um, so advantage of BHAT for regression testing, uh, BHAT and Drupal extension, is you can easily create nodes of set content. Um, so everything being the same, they should always look exactly the same. Um, so walking through it, starting off giving an anonymous user, um, set a browser width, and then create, or in this case I'm using a slightly different, um, different one saying I'm viewing an article or a node of article content type, fill in some fields, um, and then this is a custom trait or custom um, step that I created. Um, then I take a regression screenshot. So if I run that. Oh, we're down there again, sorry. Okay, so we can see we've run through, created a node, um, and then the output of that step saying, can I take a regression screenshot, uh, will actually create a PNG and tell you where we put it. So we can go have a look at them. Okay, here's a lovely screenshot with a rabbit. Okay. Um, now, if we were to make a change, we are both the developer. We've done a CSS change across all nodes without thinking. Make a change. So we can see that change has lost that margin. The article's pushed up, the content's pushed up against it. And our test should spot that change. If we look at what this test is going to be. It's exactly the same setup, so we're setting up the exact same node. Um, exact same node, everything is exactly the same, um, except the last step, the screenshot should be equal to article, is the only one that's different. So if we run that. Sets it up and it passes, which it's not supposed to do. <laughs> That's because uh, we'll just try it again. Maybe because I haven't set up the uh, settings correctly. Hey. Okay, and you'll actually see get some output from that saying files are not equal and it'll output a comparison file of the differences. So we can have a look at that again. Okay, it's not ideal, 
Um, but it'll give the developer a, a chance to, um, to find something to start with or, or a starting point. Okay, the pros and cons of this one. Um, pros can test entire pages and nodes for bugs. Uh, obviously, because it's the entire look of a node. Um, so it'll catch unintended, unintended visual changes. Um, styles might change for one thing that you didn't realize impacted another. Um, can be used for cross-browser testing as well. Um, you could either do locally or with browser stack with a bit more setup and, and time. Um, it's really great for testing module and core updates because obviously you never know how they might impact a site. That along with standard um, VHAT testing. Um, cons doesn't work well with dynamic content. So you notice I've used a set node there because we can then maintain exactly what's in the content. But even things like a, a time might change if you've got a time output on, on a node or something. Or in particular, um, views, if you, as a developer, you'll be developing away, you'll have some rogue nodes in there. Uh, like in the home page, for instance, if we tested that, uh, that, that dummy article is going to sit there, so it's always going to have, it's always going to break. Um, other cons, it can be difficult to set up and maintain. I think we're going to start running into that soon. Um, and then the baseline screenshots require constant updating. Um, so that's something we, you've got to be aware of. Same resources, really. Um, again, put everything we've done into, into a repo there. Um, and then the bottom one there is um, some base uh, BHAT steps that I've um, used for the actual screenshot comparison. OK, so summary. Uh, continuous integration gives you a complete test suite, but it's a lot of work. Um, so yes, will hopefully get you going quicker and works better. Uh, in my opinion, Artinian for smaller teams. Um, visual integration gra is great for testing completed sites. Um, oh, I haven't actually changed that text. <laughs> testing is a pain in the ass, but it's better to, um, to test something than nothing and get something in there. Thank you. <laughs> All right, questions? All right, cool. Thank you very much, Simon. Uh, do we have any questions over here? Yes. Um, with the regression testing, um, is it possible to sort of like ignore parts? So like you were saying that it was tough with dynamic content. How do you get it to work then if something <laughs> like with views or something like that? Yeah, or I does think. Does it just um, not work at all? Or? There are, there's, there's some ones like Shuv and things, some, some kind of completed ones. So that kind of one I showed you is something I've basically pulled together really in the last week. Um, I want to start using it, it's something I want to do. Um, but the deeper you delve into that, the more complex it is. Um, and there are, I mean, if you Google visual regression testing, there'll be, there'll be and, there's, and there are ones out there that do it, but they're kind of complete systems. Um, and sort of what I, tried, I was trying to get at in here was um, it's better to start off with a baseline, um, so maybe to start off with your base content types. Um, but maybe, yeah, if, you, if you've got more time and, um, and passion, <laughs> then, you could, then you could delve into that more. Yeah. yeah. In my experience, some of those things like timestamps, you can stub out content with the same timestamps so that you know your views are always going to look the same. Uh, it's just a lot more effort. Yeah. yeah that's a trade off um, always. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm just wondering about the BHAT feature for actually doing the comparison between the images. Is that something you've open sourced? Yeah. Or is that... um, let me jump into it. I wouldn't have open sourced it because I don't create too much, I just consume. <laughs> um, so, what do we got? Both. Okay, so this one, I take a regression screenshot. Okay. Um, web scope, mis yeah, so this is one, the step I've created myself, but then you can see uh, this, this one here, this cre um, create screenshot. That, I'm pretty sure, is coming from, um, oh, maybe, I'm pretty sure that's coming from that other guy, that Sivu 
Um, yeah, but I mean, you, all you, all, to get that running, you just have to grab this web scope main, con main context, um, context um, and throw that into your big hat test and it'll be there. Uh, and that should be in that repo. Um, um, that I'll refer to the Sam Becker's presentation where at one point in it he, ref he was putting, creating screenshots, not with Hat, but with Mink, I believe it was, or yeah, something. So I'm pretty sure his uses is Mink to actually And so to be using the same oh, yeah. feature. In his case, he was just creating like, the, you know, it does this and then create a screenshot just so you can review it and see what was actually happening. Maybe. Oh, I'd just say if you, I would have to refer back to the video to find out what it was. Cross-referencing for future internet users. Uh, you mentioned in, in the install scripts that you're installing Selenium on, on the servers, but are, are you running the tests? <laughs> I thought about I that. I thought about that before. Because, I mean, are the tests running through, through Gout on the server or it's like through Selenium? Um, it doesn't work on a server. But so with yeah, with B hat, you can see we've got some tags in there. So API is one of the requirements for um, the Drupal extension. So that's needed basically to pull on the Drupal extension stuff. JavaScript then in B hat decides that you're going to use. Um, okay. So locally out here, I'm running um, Phantom JS. Yes. Yeah. So that's obviously taking the screenshots locally, um, and then it should, I should be able to see what I'm using on the. I see Selenium in the scripts there. I'm yeah, that's right. They, I'm wondering what they could possibly be doing on the server. Yeah, so this is the bhat file that's used on the on CodeChip. Um, yeah, so I guess it's just running. It's using Selenium for anything that anything that's JavaScript, anything tag JavaScript. Yeah, which takes longer, so you got to be a bit more careful. Any other questions? Do you find CodeShip flaky at all? I've, um, we were we were actually using using it with Docker, using their Docker integration stuff, uh, and right. we just we we got a. I mean, it was great, but we did get a few false positives, yeah. um, false yeah. negatives. False actually. negatives. Yeah, I think. Um, I mean, in, in parts and other and other projects, we've got more and more complex in our testing, and we used to use Codeception, um, and we found that more flaky. I don't know if it's just Codeception or because it's putting more in the system, or just because they're more complex. Um, but again, it's kind of like, I, I prefer to start off baseline, get things going, and then, um, yeah, start with that. <laughs> move, in, move into the more complexity you can, but, yeah. Tom? I'm um, just wondering about uh, CodeShip. Um, do they keep the environments up after the build, so you can do any debugging? Yes, yeah. You can... Um, yeah, so you can jump in. So this is a failed one. You can see a history of them. Um, so that's one thing. So this, there's always been a lot more, but because I'm running the same project over and over again with the CS kind of concept, um, it just, it's just rewriting this top one. But any, any particular one you can jump into and then um, SSH into. Right. Can yep. you actually access the site? Uh, no. 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 Yeah. You can. The best you can do is run like a link server or something. And, yeah. Or a yeah, link there's browser. A, there's a really good uh, tool called Probo. That would started using, um, it actually builds out uh, your, your pipeline, your build, ah, but it, right. it shuts down the container afterwards, uh, and you can still access the site at that point in time. Ah, okay, it could be good, yeah. Yeah, cool, thanks so. For the all popular UAT testing, mm. let's sign off. Have we got any more questions? Okay, um, thank you so much, Simon. Uh, coming over from you've come over from New Zealand. Yeah, yeah. Yep. So, uh, yeah, big round of applause for Simon for coming. Thank you.